All right, I am so happy to be getting this opportunity to sit down with you. Welcome to the Mox and Ways in podcast, Carl. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Now, I'm just going to call it straight away because I find it fascinating. You just told me very quickly off air that you do voice over work. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's why I have this microphone set up. Please explain. I mean, your voice makes it very obvious that, you know, you might, you know, do something like that, but please explain how that has happened and what that even means. Um, so pretty much when I hit 15, puberty hit me like a truck. And so my voice went off a cliff. And ever since then, people were telling me I should get into radio or voiceover work. Um, went into uni after school, wasn't enjoying it. So I just wanted to try something completely left field. I went and did a weekend crash course at Afters, the Australian Film Television Radio School. Absolutely fell in love with it there. And the person that was running the course, Amy Longhurst, who has since passed away, was my mentor for a bit. And she actually helped me get together my demo and get me signed to EM Voices, who I'm now signed to today. So yeah, really, really cool. Short journey um, into voiceover. And I'm like, I'll always forever be thankful for Amy Longhurst because she, she's the one who got me there. So, yeah. That's super cool. Well, there we go. I'm honoured to have a professional voice on this today. <laughs> Let's talk about when you were 15 then because I think it's a great place to start. So, you said mm. puberty hit and your voice changed. Yeah. How was that whole experience for you? Let's talk about what puberty was like for you. Um, for me, it was like, I mean, I mean, for everybody, it's a massive, massive change in your life, obviously. But I was... I was pretty short. I was, I was stubby. I was chubby. You know, I'd go to ERs every week for some big meals and I hadn't exactly hit, you know, a, a big metabolism yet. So it'd just pack on the pounds. <laughs> um, but once I had puberty, I started to shoot up. I started to lose a bit of weight. Um, well, I started to slim down, I should say, because I got taller. Um, and then slowly, once everybody started hitting like, 16 years old or so like my friends would start going to the gym because you were allowed to um gym opened up near me so i started going to the gym there and it was like um you know everyone was almost not competing but like you know everybody wanted to be the strongest or the biggest or or that and that's just i mean i guess that's just high school not necessarily just puberty so yeah <laughs> It's an interesting perspective because to be honest with you, I've spoken to lots of women who can reflect on what puberty was like for them. Um, but it's not something that men usually, you know, we don't take the time to go back and say, you know, what was that experience like for you and how has it shaped you today as an adult? So would you say that your teen years formed a solid, strong, healthy foundation for, you know, self-awareness and body image or was it a rocky road for you? I feel like it had positives and negatives. So um, I feel like to begin with, the like the sole goal was to just like to just to just be big, to be muscly, to be strong. Like that was your only focus because you just you wanted you wanted to be the alpha, so to speak. Like you just you wanted to be the biggest dude there was because you'd only just started at the gym and so everybody was like trying to take the lead, um, and it you know, it built good foundations for me because also the gym was an escape for me from school. So like with, with year 12 coming in, it's like this most stressful year of your schooling life uh, and, and heading to the gym basically every day to me was an escape from study and stress. And it was also an escape that mum couldn't oppose because it was for my health. <laughs> Uh, that is so relatable i think i <laughs> have used the gym for that you know when you're a teenager it's like the one thing you can do that makes you feel a little bit more grown up than you are right yeah absolutely so i would you know i'd come home from school chuck my bag down get changed walk to the gym like that was that was my routine monday to friday i'd go basically every day um and so it, it built good habits in that sense that it got me training i learned so much i was constantly looking up workout videos uh, and so I really built a good foundation for like my fitness and, and, and technique and all that. So that was really great. Um, but I feel like I didn't learn a whole lot as far as, uh, training alongside mental wellness and like general health and all that. It was all just, let me get as big as humanly possible. 
Yeah, right. That was what I learned. So. And were you successful in that endeavor? Yeah. So I actually, I actually took upon some advice from my cousin, Luke, who is one of the biggest people I know. He's just, he's the Hulk. <laughs> um, and I asked him when I first started training, I was like, dude, what's your advice? Like, I really just want to bulk up. And he goes, look, I'll give you two pieces of advice and I can guarantee you that you'll put on size. And I was like, all right, hit me with it. And he goes, eat every meal. Like you're never going to eat again. And he goes, train like you've never trained before. And so I took that, I took that on. And so like, you know, mum will make me spaghetti bolognese. I'd eat two full bowls of it of a morning. I'd be having, you know, four eggs on toast with some bacon and that. And, you know, I'd just be hammering all this food. And in, I think three months, I went from 80 kilos to 89 kilos. And that was like, <laughs> Like, obviously, it wasn't exactly muscle, like not all muscle, but yeah, I definitely gained size. I mean, it's good advice when you think about it, really, as simple as it is. It's like be conscious and be aware of what you're eating and how yeah. you're eating because it matters. Absolutely. Okay. So let's skip forward a few years because the reason I pulled you into the podcast today was you had such a beautiful reflective post on Facebook where you had two pictures of yourself and you were just kind of reflecting on the inner journey that you've had between being somebody who, you know, wasn't so confident within their skin to today being someone who, you know, is proudly reflecting on just how far you've come. Did you want to talk a little bit about that post and what prompted you to share like that on your social? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it was actually a, so, so over the course of this month um, of July, I've been getting a bunch of Snapchat memories from my trip to Europe in 2018. Um, so that was two years ago now. And a picture came up um, and I was wearing this particular shirt. It's like a, a Drake <laughs> merchandise shirt. Um, and I was looking at the picture and I was just like, oh my God, I was so skinny. And, and, you know, back then in my head, I was just, I was really healthy and, you know, I may, I may have been fairly healthy, but looking back on that time from probably from the start of the year to my trip, the start of the year, I was probably around a hundred kilos. And by the time I left for my trip in July, I was 86 and like, I'm, I'm six foot one. So 86 for me being a fairly big, bulky person in general like I'm fairly broad looking back on that I was very very slim and it was just because I was so so fixated on losing weight that was the goal like everyone talks about it when they go on a Europe trip or an America trip or whatever the hell all it is is I'm going to go to the gym I'm going to slim down I'm going to lose a bunch of weight before I go on this trip so I can look fantastic on this trip mm -hmm. and I got really stuck in that and so I was eating you know, next to, not next to nothing, but next to nothing compared to what I should have been eating. Um, mind you, it was good food. Uh, but yeah, again, just looking back on that photo, I was like, oh my God, I was, I was so small. Like I was looking at my arms. I'm like, oh my God, like twigs, what are you doing? Um, and so I was like, man, I wonder how that shirt fits today. And so I put on the shirt and sure enough, my arms are filling it out a lot more. It's, it's more fitted across the chest. And I took a second photo just to compare the two. And that's, that's the side by side that I put up on Instagram. And I was like, you know what? I'm 20 times happier in my body today, despite <laughs> the lack of abs and, you know, the lack of immense arm definition or whatever, because I just, I'm training better. I'm, I'm eating fairly well in general, like I'm avoiding junk food, but you know, every Saturday, I let myself absolutely go ham. I eat whatever the hell I want on a Saturday. That's my day to just pig out so that the rest of the week, for the most part, I'm on track. Like if somebody takes me out to lunch or something, I'll still, I'll still treat myself. And I'm okay with that because I've accepted that the things that make me happy, are like food's included in that for me. Love food. I love good food. I love bad food. <laughs> And, and I'm, I'm quite happy with the body that I have today because I know that I'm physically well, I'm training harder than I ever have. Um, but I'm also mentally well because I'm allowing myself to just enjoy life. I'm just, I'm truly, I can truly, truly say that I'm, I'm so happy right now. Like I'm happy. 
holy shit sorry i'm so happy right now i really am um it's a beautiful realization to make sometimes isn't it and it's not till we reflect sometimes that we go wow yeah so and that's all right take it in um it's you know it's a beautiful thing to be able to reflect on who we are and to be proud of who we've become and to know that you know we've had a big part in the happiness that we're now feeling so yeah. much of our life is spent you know looking to external sources to make us feel a certain way you know, we look to relationships, we look to all sorts of things to make us happy. And when we realize, wow, I finally feel the way I want to feel. And I've done that. And I've built that within me. My happiness comes from within. It's yeah. Happening. Yeah. It's really cool. And, and this is truth. Like I know that this is your podcast, but truthfully, you've played a huge part in this as well. Um, like these, these classes that you've been doing for me, well, <laughs> for me personally, yeah, it's a <laughs> I love that um, it feels like <laughs> it does. It does. Um, these morning classes, you know, Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturday morning, I've, I've been to every single one for the past three months and having that, having that schedule and that consistency, um, you know, those classes, I would do just them and two other days of weights. That's how I started like really getting back into it. And then slowly I was like, I was like, I'm doing this pretty, like pretty easily. Like I'm, I'm quite happy doing this. I was like, I kind of want to do more. And so now after your classes, I'll be adding in weights. And now I'm doing weights five to six times a week alongside your high intensity, like body weight stuff. Um, but yeah, like truly it was, it was your classes that really kickstarted me kind of into this better, better mindset because I felt myself getting through your classes more easily and i was like whoa like i really am i'm getting stronger i'm getting fitter i feel better um and it's just yeah it's just a really cool feeling and so that's what drove me to really really hit it with the weights as well um and just today i actually hit three sets of 10 chin-ups with strict form like i didn't need to i didn't need to swing myself up like i just did it um and it was awesome it was a really cool feeling that's so amazing all of that makes me so happy i think yeah. what we've all done together the powerful mind shifts that we all make is that we celebrate just by logging on and seeing each other so we're happy and we're proud and we've accomplished something just by showing up together three times a week we don't wait to the end of the session to judge whether we can feel proud of ourselves or good about ourselves or whether that was a good session we lead with that self-love and with yeah. that appreciation for ourselves. And I think that's what we learn. And that's why we keep showing up. The workouts are, are killer. We know that. Oh they're, yeah, They're effective and efficient, but we keep showing up because we know that it's a place and space for us to show up and just check in with ourselves and say, am I showing up with, you know, great energy with the intention of who I want to be in the world. And I think that's what gets us hooked because you know, yeah. it's going to be a good feeling. And I think for so many of us, coming into exercise we've used exercise to punish ourselves or you know to judge ourselves and we have this sense of like self-loathing the whole time you're like come on you dickhead push harder <laughs> right? and I guess the way that we train together we don't allow that it's empowering the whole time it's like lifting yourself from the inside out so I am not surprised at your results at all yeah, it's, it's awesome you are just a vibe within yourself. And that's why I wanted to sit and chat with you because, you know, every time you pop up on that screen, you are smiling, you are willing. I have no idea what is going on in your day to day. You know, all I know is that when you show up, you're there and you're present and you're ready to give it for the next half hour. So my final question, I guess, today to you is could you share with us, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, are there some things that you do to kind of manage and maintain your own energy day to day or through the week? You know, are there things that you do that generate the happiness that you were talking about? I think, I think my, I think my number one thing is that I can sit down and truly tell myself that I'm pursuing things that I love and I'm pursuing things that I would happily do every day for the rest of my life. So music, <clears throat> music is something that I love. Producing music is something that I love. And I'm so, so overtly aware that I'm at the very beginning of my journey in music. So like I only started producing in November. Um, and so I'm aware that I'm very, very new to this game, but I, I love it so much and I have such a passion for it. 
that I'm willing to sit here and slog it out for the next 10 years if I need to. And being able to sit down and be like, look, I know it's going to be a long road. Um, and I know that right now I'm working a shitty little retail job and living at home. And like, you know, I'm, I'm not doing anything extravagant right now, but I'm okay with that because I'm doing something that I love every day. Like I'm working on my skills every day. Um, and as far as keeping my mindset, like, like happy and positive in general, it's honestly working out basically every day and trying to see friends as much as possible. Obviously that doesn't apply to everybody. I am one of the most social people I know. I'm seeing friends as much as humanly possible because I get a lot of my energy from my friends. Um, and I surround myself with happy, positive people that support me and support my ambitions. And I think that's hugely important because um, I'm going on, 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 a, on a bit of a tangent here, but I feel like a lot of people um, who might be, you know, apathetic or just like, uh, I, I guess, feel a bit stuck or, or not really know kind of what's happening, quite typically can be around a lot of people that are just like, oh, it's fine. Like, we don't know what's happening either. Like, let's all like, let's all go drink. Like, let's all go like, just forget about it you know, and, and surrounding myself with other ambitious people is, is what's driving me to keep going, you know? Um, so yeah, I think, I think training friends and just like pursue your passions, honestly, just really stuff that you love, just do it every day. <laughs> I love it. You know, this chat with you today has reminded me of something I listened to yesterday. Um, and in it, the speaker was talking about the fact that sometimes we focus so much on weaknesses and thinking that we just have to improve. We have to identify, you know, what we are not so good at and improve. Yeah. And some of us become so insecure about our weaknesses that we acknowledge we have that it holds us back. Um, and there is real power in just kind of acknowledging, yeah, I might suck at certain things, but these are the things I'm really good at. And just turning all of your focus and your energy to those things that you are good at. Because at the end of the day, some of the weaknesses that we have developed insecurities about don't really matter. Absolutely. I, I could relate to that. I was never really that good at maths. Um, and so when I was in primary school, I was put, I was quite academic as a child and mm -hmm. I was put into like these advanced classes. And within my little classroom, I had been like top dog and I got put into these advanced classes and these kids were just like maths geniuses, whizzers, like well ahead of where we should have been at 10 or 11 years old. Yeah. There was this big gap between my knowledge and their knowledge. And so I internalized that as, oh my God, I suck at maths. <laughs> and it's been this repeated narrative and rather than say, I don't understand what's happening, I just like cheated, to be honest cheated in all sorts of little like scenarios and I never really learned it stunted my development and became a real insecurity right through high school I would just say I'm shit at maths and you know it stopped me really from ever progressing and it made me feel dumb in a lot of ways even now still as an adult sometimes I feel myself if I've got to do quick maths I panic and I'm more than <laughs> capable but, you know, I, it was an insecurity. And for so long, I thought that meant that there was elements of business, you know, that I would be no good at. And, you know, that was going to hold me back. And what I realized was I could let that whole story of being bad at maths go and just focus on what I was really good at. And that is creating and connecting and bringing people together and, you know, that sort of stuff. The fact that I can't do fast maths or complicated maths does not matter. If I had spent my time and energy trying to get better at maths, it would have taken away from all the time and energy spent on actually growing and evolving into who I have become. Absolutely. And to be told, I just pay someone to do all the maths shit within my business now. Exactly. So I think what I'm trying to highlight is really just understanding who you are, what you're good at, where your passions lie. Once you do that and give yourself permission to just go with that, and forget about everything that you're not really good at that doesn't really matter. It just makes life so much more exciting, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I, I remember talking to um to my cousin who's a business owner, and he was just like, dude, too many people try to do absolutely everything themselves. He's like, I have a dude for accounting, I have a dude for marketing. Like, I don't have to do all that. If I was my own accountant, <laughs> this business would be in the ground. <laughs> so it's it really is about finding what you're good at and he's really good at the buying and selling so you know 
you don't need to do everything yourself find what you're good at and double down just go for it <laughs> yeah and is that what music has become for you you've identified that as your thing absolutely like i i just for the longest time i didn't think i was a creative person and truly up until i tried voiceover work i still believed that i really really didn't think i was a creative person at all um and once I tried voiceover, I was like, whoa, I'm actually in a creative industry now. This is kind of cool. And then out of nowhere, this opportunity came up for me to have music production lessons with one of my favorite producers and DJs. And I just jumped at it. I was like, why not? Like, this could be a lot of fun. After the first lesson, I was like, I want to do this. Like, I really want to do this. And I think like three lessons in, I ended up dropping a thousand dollars on speakers and like the whole setup because I was like I know I'm gonna keep doing this um and yeah so just creativity has just become everything that I want to do music right now is my that's my focus that's my thing that's what I want to do I love so, it yeah. I love it I could talk to you all day Carl <laughs> just bottle your energy up and share it with people because I just love that you just own who you are. You own what you like, you own the lifestyle that you're living and you're just living from that place of complete self-awareness. Yeah. It's, it's a good place to be. <laughs> I love it. We'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much.